Good evening everyone. My name is Sophie and I would like to give you a 10 minute update on period pain and endometriosis and particularly in the way ultrasound can help making that diagnosis of endometriosis. Endometriosis is a very common condition. It affects about 10% of women in the reproductive age group. The problem is that period pain is even more common and it is often considered as normal. And it is not surprising that there has been reported to be a significant delay between symptoms and diagnosis, and that can be seven to nine years. It is probably partially because endometriosis can really only be diagnosed with certainty by doing an invasive test, a laparoscopy. That is the gold standard of diagnosis, and it can diagnose all forms of endometriosis. But when a laparoscopist is going to do an invasive procedure on a woman with symptoms of endometriosis, there are a number of possible findings during the laparoscopy, some of which are very easy to treat and other ones that are a nightmare to treat. So therefore, I just want to take you through the different possible findings on laparoscopy to then go on explaining why it may be beneficial to diagnose some of those forms preoperatively. So in this particular image here on the left side, that is one of the possible outcomes, that is where the pelvis is completely normal. So this is the uterus here. These are the uterosacral ligaments, the ovary and the ovary on the other side. This is the rectum. And here deep down is the patch of Douglas. The patch of Douglas is sort of the area where endometriosis will first occur um, when it does um, occur in the pelvis. And very often it will be on those uterosacral ligaments, but from there it can also be on the bell, it can be on the ovaries um, or um, just on the posterior vagina. So the image here on the right side shows very, very mild endometriosis. There is a single deposit, a little sprinkle of endometriosis um, just here on the peritoneum. And you can see that it would be very easy to remove this lesion just by excision. But superficial endometriosis, like this um, lesion represents superficial endometriosis, is not always um, that um, simple. In actual fact, superficial endometriosis can be scattered throughout the whole pelvis. And this is an image, um, a clip showing a woman that has significant um, superficial endometriosis absolutely everywhere. There are these little deposits everywhere in the patch of Douglas, um, on the pelvic side wall, all those tiny little brand dots, a little bit bigger here on the usual sacral ligament. Those are all deposits of um, um, superficial endometriosis. In addition, just here in the ovarian fossa, there are lots of little vesicles and lots of little um, lesions that are all representing um, um, superficial endometriosis. The other possible finding on laparoscopy is an endometrioma, basically a cyst filled with menstrual blood on the ovaries. And that is usually the only form of endometriosis that the surgeon will have some warning about. Because typically a pelvic ultrasound, and most women who undergo a laparoscopy have a pelvic ultrasound before the laparoscopy, most pelvic ultrasounds will carefully look at the ovaries and the uterus. And so therefore, if there is evidence of endometriosis on the ovaries, then usually there is some preoperative warning. Um, and this is what the endometrioma looks like on ultrasound. Now the problem is that um, very often the endometrioma is only the tip of the iceberg. It may be associated with deep infiltrating endometriosis. And deep infiltrating endometriosis is really a completely different entity. It behaves differently. Um, lesions of deep infiltrating endometriosis by definition are lesions that penetrate under the peritoneal surface by at least five millimeters they cause significantly more destruction of the normal anatomy, they can cause a lot of inflammation and scarring and therefore numerous adhesions making surgery much more difficult. Um, so this image here demonstrates a pelvis in which there is significant deep infiltrating endometriosis. Um, comparing it to the normal pelvis where everything is nice and visible and separate, here this is uterus, this is fat in the abdomen, this is bowel, um, a bit of fallopian tube and ovary, and you can see that everything is completely stuck together. So if the laparoscopist stumbles upon this without knowing that this is present, it is impossible to remove it at the time. Um, it is difficult to judge whether 
um, the endometriosis is infiltrating into the bowel wall and before starting such surgery the surgeon would feel much more comfortable um, having a colorectal surgeon present to help. So usually in this sort of situation the surgery cannot be completed and the patient needs to come back. The problem is that there is no relationship between the extent of the lesions and the symptoms. So basically by just um, questioning the patient about her symptoms um, does not give enough information to the surgeon to know where he will need help from a colorectal surgeon, where he will need more operating time. So therefore most of the time until recently um, for women with deep infiltrating endometriosis it involved repetitive surgery. Often a first laparoscopy may be done um, by a general gynaecologist, not an endometriosis specialist, and they stumble upon the deep infiltrating endometriosis and they can only diagnose it, um, they cannot remove it, um, it is too complicated, so they may refer the patient on to an endometriosis specialist. Um, often because the endometriosis specialist then doesn't know whether the bowel is involved or not, um, whether the colorectal surgeon should be there or not, and they don't really want to ask him to come if there's no um, work for him to be done. They may do a second laparoscopy, do maybe some partial removal of endometriosis and then do further advanced planning for further resection if there is um, evidence of um, bowel involvement. And then often women undergo a third um, laparoscopy with a multidisciplinary team after bowel preparation um, with removal of um, most endometriosis, which is quite complex surgery. Now in 2009, this group from Brazil published an article that described a technique on ultrasound to actually go and diagnose um, this deep infiltrating form of endometriosis. And since my husband, um, Luke Rombards, he's an endometriosis surgeon in Melbourne, um, as soon as he heard at a conference, an endometriosis conference, mentioning that deep endometriosis could be diagnosed um, preoperatively, he sent me to Brazil to go and learn the technique to offer this service here in Melbourne. And going to Brazil was eye-opening because um, I, have, I had done at the time over 15 years of gynecological ultrasound, yet I had never considered looking in the patch of Douglas or looking at the bell. And there was a significant proportion of gynecological pathology that we completely missed by not looking in those areas. And the main thing I learned in Brazil is how important it is to put the vaginal ultrasound probe um, in the posterior fornix to go and look at the patch of Douglas because that is where um, deep infiltrating endometriosis will occur. And so it makes complete sense to put the probe there and go and have a look. Because when we put the probe here in the posterior fornix, right in front of us is the vagina. So we can examine the vagina. We can also examine the rectal vaginal septum. We can examine the uterosacral ligaments. These are the uterosacral ligaments. They insert here at the back of the uterus. And then we can go and inspect the bowel wall to check for bowel nodules. And we can, by putting a little bit of pressure on the uterus, we can go and see whether the uterus slides over the bowel to detect possible patch of Douglas obliteration, which basically means that the bowel is stuck to the posterior uterus and that we can't demonstrate that sliding. And on laparoscopy, they will not be able to see the patch of Douglas um, because of the adhesions. And, um, and those things make surgery much more difficult. So rather than just looking at the uterus and the ovaries, detecting only endometriomas, we decided in our practice um, to extend the scan, the pelvic ultrasound, to also including the bladder, um, the patch of Douglas, particularly the bowel and patch of Douglas obliteration, because those are the two things that make surgery significantly more difficult. But over time, we started looking at more subtle things on the uterosacral ligaments, the vaginal wall, and also looking at kidneys, because sometimes you can have ureteric obstruction um, and silent hydronephrosis because of endometriosis growing over the ureter. So I'm not going to bore you with too many ultrasound images, but I just want to show you a few images of the most important features, because I think if I can convince you to look and see what I mean, then you can expect from your imaging specialists um, to have a look as well and diagnose um, patch of Douglas obliteration or bowel nodules. 
So patriodactylus obliteration, as I said before, is diagnosed by looking at sliding between the uterus and the bowel. If there is good sliding seen all over the back wall of the uterus and the posterior vagina, then really there is no patriodactylus obliteration. And this is sort of the sliding sign here. So this structure here is the uterus and the whiter sort of area is the bell. And if I push, as I'm doing here, you can clearly see that sliding here just in between the structure of the uterus and the bell. And so this uterus is sliding very nicely. There is no patriodactylus obliteration. The complete opposite here. So this is um, still the uterus, but the uterus is now sort of the top of the uterus, which is here, is sort of pulled towards the patient's back um, and that is because there are all these adhesions on the back of the uterus so now when I push there is no sliding here at all it should all be sliding here instead I can see sliding somewhere down here um, which is not at the back of the uterus um, and so here the bowel is completely stuck to the uterus and um, the patch of Douglas is completely obliterated predicting difficult surgery. The other important thing to diagnose um, for the surgeon is bowel lesions, um, so looking at involvement of the bowel by endometriosis. Um, the bowel is something new that we never used to look at, um, but it can actually be seen well on ultrasound. The bowel typically has um, three layers. It has a muscle layer, the muscularis layer, um, the submucosa layer and the mucosa layer. And then at the back, it's the same thing, mucosa, submucosa and muscularis layer. Now endometriosis falls into the pelvis and starts growing from the outside into the bowel wall. Um, so it falls onto the serosa of the bowel and then it will grow into the muscularis layer and um, the muscularis layer will thicken and that's that black layer, the thin black layer here is normal muscularis and this is a bowel lesion here and then it starts pushing the submucosa layer forward and eventually it will grow through the submucosa layer and, um, and even through the mucosa. And that's a time that women start describing bleeding from the bowel during their period. It is because endometriosis has grown through all three layers of the bowel. Now, to see those lesions, you need to take the time, and it only takes a few minutes, to look at the bowel systematically. So the next clip I'm going to show you, I pull the probe almost to the entrance of the vagina, and then I follow the bowel wall and that black line here is the bowel wall and can you see how there's suddenly this thickening just like in the in the diagram that I showed you before so this is still normal bowel as I was following it I suddenly come to this thickening that has stuck to the back of the vagina and this thickening is an endometriosis lesion of the bowel I'm going to play that clip one more time so we start at the entrance of the vagina we follow the black line of the bowel and then suddenly there is this black lesion here which is a typical bowel lesion and so they are quite easy to see but they are completely missed unless the bowel is looked at properly so when we started doing this um, at our practice in 2009, um, we were keen to follow up our results to make sure that the results were um, similar to um, the results published by the experts in the literature. And our first approximately 100 cases where we followed up laparoscopy results showed that the sensitivity and the specificity was very comparable and um, and that it has a very good detection rate and a very high specificity of 90, about 90 and 97 percent. So um, we feel therefore that it's time to say goodbye to the old pathway that required um, three laparoscopies um, before a multidisciplinary team was present to remove the endometriosis properly. And we think it's time for a new pathway where women with symptoms of endometriosis are diagnosed preoperatively by ultrasound and the um, endometriosis is mapped and then a multidisciplinary team can be present during the first laparoscopy which can then also be the last laparoscopy. Um, knowing this in advance also allows the surgeon to talk in much more detail with the patient about um, what the operation may involve and then patients are able to make more informed decisions on what they are prepared to um, undergo. So therefore, I think this is a reasonable sort of flowchart on what to do with period pain. 
Um, so if patients have significant symptoms, uh, meaning dysmenorrhea more than 6 out of 10, dyspareunia more than 6 out of 10, dysuria more than 6 out of 10, or any dyskesia or pain when opening their bowels during the period, then I think it's reasonable to request an ultrasound and expect a comment on endometriosis by the imaging um, specialist. If there are no significant symptoms, then it's reasonable to try the oral contraceptive pill or pain relief, and if there is no improvement, then still request an ultrasound. If the ultrasound shows that there is deep infiltrating endometriosis, then I think referral to an endometriosis specialist is indicated as that type of surgery is incredibly complex. However, if there's no deep infiltrating um, endometriosis on ultrasound and the patient has not yet tried the pill or pain relief, she can try that. But if there's no improvement, um, then referral to a general gynecologist to consider a laparoscopy to diagnose possible superficial endometriosis is still indicated. So in conclusion, in experienced hands, transvaginal ultrasound is highly accurate in diagnosing deep infiltrating endometriosis. And the treatment of deep infiltrating endometriosis is difficult. The preoperative diagnosis of deep infiltrating endometriosis improves outcomes for patients. So I believe patients and doctors should expect deep infiltrating um, endometriosis to be diagnosed. Um, but ultrasound cannot exclude superficial endometriosis, and so therefore when significant symptoms are present, a laparoscopy should still be considered. Now we have set up a website, um, safe-endo.com.au. Um, the purpose was really to provide, to raise awareness um, amongst patients um, what they should expect from an ultrasound, um, how the ultrasound can help, the limitations of ultrasound, and how we can not diagnose the superficial lesions. But also, um, we hope to provide workshops and um, training for imaging specialists and sonographers to learn to diagnose deep infiltrating endometriosis because we feel strongly that it should not be a specialist um, um, assessment. Um, endometriosis is so common and endometriosis symptoms are such a common reason for referral for a pelvic ultrasound that it's really not very useful for patients that a few specialists look for endometriosis. Everybody who does pelvic ultrasound should include the assessment of the patch of Douglas and, and if there are abnormalities in the patch of Douglas assessment of the bowel in, um, in their routine pelvic ultrasound of women in the reproductive age group with symptoms of endometriosis. So we have um, also put tutorials on YouTube, um, on the City Imaging channel, um, just um, for sonographers or imaging specialists that are interested in learning more about how to look for deep infiltrating endometriosis, they can have a look at those images. Thank you for your attention.